So today we are going to be installing a Starlight roof to my Corsa D 2009. Not one person on YouTube has uploaded a step-by-step -step guide or a tutorial of how to install a Starlight roof on a Corsa D. I feel privileged to be the first one to do it because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But we're going to find a way. And of course I've got to help you guys out that wanting to do this to your car because you know Corsas aren't really up there and we're trying to make them look like Rolls Royces because... Cause we're poor out here but all jokes aside we're gonna try and make this look as good as possible i'm gonna try and show you how to measure it all out and square it off so you get the right amount of holes i'm using a 500 pieces one there's a difference as well the one i've linked down below is the one i'll be using in the video but there's two different styles may even be more but on starlight roofs you have one that doesn't twinkle and doesn't have the shooting stars that shoot past on top of the roof so if you want to go with the one that doesn't flash then it's just standard but obviously it will still fade through in different colors or well, there's one that like twinkles so it like flashes at you type of thing and it has like the shooting stars that shoot past obviously it's a bit more expensive whereas the normal ones normally range to 110 pound for 500 pieces of just like standard ones that don't like twinkle or you go for the ones that twinkle with the shooting stars which are about 160 upwards some a little bit lower it all depends on what brand you get and where you buy from. I've actually gone for the one that twinkles with the shooting stars because personally, in my own opinion, I think it looks a little bit cooler. It's a little bit more expensive, but then again, it's not much difference compared to the one that doesn't do anything. And I wanted to go for the full look. For the ones that want to do it a little bit cheaper, maybe more on a budget side, I'd go for the ones that don't do that. But it still kind of does the same thing with the flashing, just obviously you can change the settings if you want it to flash quick or you just want it to fade through, you have a remote to do so. You can also Bluetooth these on your phone or most of them, you need to make sure you get the right one if you wanna do that. As you can edit colors and it has apparently 60 million different colors you can choose from and edit yourself into your own style and the way these flash through. So obviously in the video before, I took my roof lining down and I painted it black and that's why I had the drill holes in. So it's all starting to make a bit more sense to you now. I've used a 1 16th drill bit and I'll put a picture here of the one I've used. That's the size you wanna go for really because you go any bigger and you're gonna have massive holes. You can go a little bit smaller, but obviously the 1 16th drill bit is quite small anyway. And I think it fits pretty perfect for the fiber optics to go through. At the end, you can either cut them with nail clippers. I find that easier. Or you can use pliers. The pliers are okay, but they're a bit clumpier. So when you're trying to break them off, they're not as easy to. But nail clippers seem to get right up there and cut them straight back. And it has like a more neater finish to it. So if I was you, I'd just literally use nail clippers. It works so much easier than pliers. You're going to need a hot glue gun as well for this. You're going to need quite a couple of glue sticks as well to go in the hot glue gun because you do go through quite a lot especially if you're going over 500 dabbing every fiber optic in there and also if you want to see me do this to my subaru wrx blob by then feel free to comment it down below and i'll also do that as well depending on if the course one goes right and if it does then i'm going to be tempted to spray all my roof line in black you don't actually have to spray it black but i think it's going to show a bit more and be a bit darker whereas with cream it might not show as much and you probably see the holes a bit more when you've drilled through in the daytime hence why i've sprayed it black so it kind of gets rid of that and that's also another reason as well of why i drilled the holes through before i painted it black because obviously if you spray it before and then you go drilling through all the cream from inside is all going to push back out for the drill bit hence why i done it the way i did it in the last video if you want to watch that for it to make sense then it will obviously in this video i'm going to show you how to actually drill through them and glue it and everything you need to do step by step for this starlight roof enough of me talking let's go do this starlight roof on the course of d a lot of you must think i'm mental but a lot of you requested for this. So let's get to it. So I do actually want to mention as well, I'm making two videos at once. So I'm taking this headliner off. When I take it off the first time, it's going to look cream, but obviously when it's out, it's going to look black. So don't get confused with that. I'm making two videos at once. And if you want to see me spray it black, then you can click the link down below. I'll put it in the description. But this is what it looks like before I take it out but it's going to jump from cream to black so it is still the same roof just i would have painted it because i'll be drilling through so all the cream will come back out so i am gonna do the drill holes first and then i'm gonna spray it black so that all the cream will be covered either way 
because clearly the roof is cream at the moment and if I spray it black it will only just go cream again because underneath this will be cream at the top as well so there is no point in me repeating myself twice that's what I'm doing I'm putting that out there now so no one gets confused we can start removing the roof so the first thing you're actually going to want to do when you're removing the course of roof disconnect the battery because on here they normally say airbag mine doesn't say it so i don't know if it has got them or not but i've seen it on other courses where it does say it so if yours does say it definitely remove it i don't know if you have to remove mine but i'm going to do it either way just in case and then that way we can start removing this roof if you actually want to see me remove this headlining with the plastic trims go to the description down below and click the link to the video i turn my corset interior from gray to black Basically in there, I recorded how to do it on that, and I don't want to put the same video twice, plus this video is already quite long as it is, so I thought I'd make it as short as possible. So if you do actually want to see how to remove the roof and the plastic trims, then go to the other video, it will show you there how to actually remove the roof. So this is the other side of the roof. I'm going to take this off for now. It's only taped on, so it should just peel straight off. Once that cover is off, we can then start marking all of the different points. Got 520 of these, as I've said before, and we just need to spread them out. I don't want it to be too clumpy like there and there. I want it to be like there, there, there. So it like spreads it out evenly. So it's not all on top of each other. Because I do want to try and get all of this done there like over the sides here because i see a lot of people just do it in the center and i don't really know why they leave such a gap there but i'm sure i'll find out let's start marking this out what i'm going to do now is, is i'm going to draw a red line of where not to put the lights because i'm not going to go under the visors because you're not going to really see them anyway <laughs> So what I've done now is I've wrote down what everything is so you guys can like pause the video and you can read what it means. So I've got a shooting star for green and I've put the dots so that we know where to put the lights individually. So there's about 12 on here but they're all different lengths because I'm doing all different size shooting stars. So that's what the green means. And then I've got out of bounds which is the red line which you can see this is where we won't be putting any circles. We'll put a couple in there about six. But around here, we don't want to go on top of the sun visor. They're like the weakest points of the roof. So we aren't going to go on them. So I'll go around just to show you. We're not going to go here because the window will be there. And I don't want it to reflect in the glass. So that's why that isn't done. And then we've got a couple in there. Around here is where the supports are going to be at the beams. Especially here. That's why I've taken a chunk out there. And there's only going to be a couple there, obviously. That's how you want to do it. I've done it around there as well, just because, again, that is the weakest part of the roof. The blue line is the split line. We've got 130 in each section. So we've got 130 there, 130 there, and 130 at the two fronts. And then the pink and the black is just the light dots because we're gonna be dotting around. We haven't put the dots yet, but we will be in a second. It doesn't mean any difference. The pink and the black is literally just the dots. Now we can get to putting the dots on and then we can start drilling through. Right, so we've now done all the dots. Got 130 in each one. This is how I've laid it out. We aren't going above the red barrier, like I said before. Same on this side. That is what it's looking like for any of you wondering. Now we need to start drilling through. I'm going to be using this size drill, but it's a 1.5 millimeter. And I'm going to be drilling through all the holes now. I've got my drill. That's what I'm going to be using to drill through. And that is hole 520. This thing is on fire. <laughs> so as you can see, it's really small holes. It's only 1.5 millimeter. But luckily with this one, you can barely see it. Obviously you can see a couple marks of where the drill holes have come through, but not as much as I thought you would be able to. Looks like a big chunk's come out, but it literally hasn't, which is good. So this is the fiber optic kit that's come. One row of lights there, another there of instructions on there this is where the shooting star effect will come in place what you do is you put these little aluminium cylinders into there 
and then you get one of the fiber optics stick it through and then you have these screws inside the bag and then you screw it in place so it can't come out and then that's how a shooting star effect happens so it's not just that one strip of a shooting star you have different ones so you put one in there one in there and then you carry on with however many you want this is the projector it comes with the remote and then another remote you can also download an app which is on this qr code here more fiber optics these two to go on here to hold them in place the cigarette lighter that it plugs into this plugs into the back of there and you press on obviously and then it will turn on and then you have another wire here for an extension so that is all the kit included and i'll put the link in the description if you want the exact same kit as i've bought start threading through all the fiber optics and start hot gluing them together so what you want to do is you want to get both different halves of fiber optics it's three different packs but you're going to make two out of it because otherwise it's like slips through so if you do it on its own, it doesn't actually connect in because the hole's too big for it. So we've taped it up here so that it can't fall through. And that's what I'm gonna show you now. So what you do is you tape both halves together. Like that. So now it can make this hole tight enough so it can't slip through. So we're taping them all to stick together so it's easier to stick into the tube that way, like that. And then you just tighten it up here like that and now it shouldn't slip through because when you do get them they will just slot straight through and a lot of people will get confused with that and once you've got it out and it's poking out you need to cut it off level which it says to do just here so it actually finishes flush so it can go in there properly what you do when you've cut them off flush you unscrew that screw there push the fiber optics in and then you put a screw back in and then tighten it all together so it can't fall loose and it should be secure in there. With regards to the shooting lights, you get this aluminium tube here, push it in and you get the screw to include. Screw it in so it can't move and then you put in the fiber optics as well. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut the ends off so it's flush. So you wanna try and get it as close as possible, basically right on the edge. So as you can see so far, it is starting to go through. Scissors don't work at all, but this Stanley's doing it. It's slow, but it is getting there. And that's what it should look like once you've cut it off. Now it's flush, it should go in here really nicely. What you need to do now is loosen this screw up so that you can fit it in. And it should slot in like that. Screw it back up and then you do the same on the other side. So now we have this wired up, get these aluminium tubes. What you do is you put it in the top like that, and then you pop the screw in here, screw it tight. So that this can't move out, so it's now secure in there. Get the fiber optic, put them into the tube, and then you need to get some electrical tape and then you'd like wrap it around, so you'd like wrap it around the metal and then around the fiber optics itself, so it's in there and it can't fall out. But that's how it says to do it, and then that's how the shooting star lights will work. So you'll have a certain amount in there, and then you carry on going through there, and it all goes into separate shooting lights. So it depends how many you want. So you can have up to 12 different shooting stars if you wanted to, and it would all go into here. And this is what it should look like once they're all in place. Just do every single one the same as I showed you on video. And that's how it should look like. So what you want to do is you want to take out 12 strands and put 12 in there and 12 in the rest of them as well. So when you put them into the dots, they all line up perfectly because I've got 12 shooting stars at the moment. So I'm going to put 12 strands in each one so they go into all different 12 shooting stars and then that way they'll glide through. So I've now wrote down where the first point will go. So it'll go one, two, and then I put the lines to show how many more it'll go up. That's where it starts off. Now I'm going to start feeding through the fiber optics through the holes that we drilled through. So this is the three meter long fiber optic. And we're going to do the three meters to the front. It's going to start feeding them through now. It's that easy. We've got to do this another 520 times. So I'm going to time lapse this so that you don't have to watch us really slowly put 520 holes in.
this is what the starlight roof is looking like so far. Finally all finished, every single fibre optic has now been glued with a glue gun. I've now separated all the individual shooting stars, so the ones that are like in a circle hoop are the ones that are the shooting stars, like here. So I know which ones are actually the shooting stars and I don't get mixed up then because otherwise I'd have to pull all the threads out of the main wire there which goes in, into the projector so i've already done it now so i don't have to mess around doing that later on but it's that simple and then i just hooped it all into a circle like you can see and i've said so that it can't fall loose everywhere and it can't get broken then you need to get all of these individual strands and put them into the shooting star projector and then that way the shooting stars will be all good to go. I've also got some extra wire which I'll link, link down in the description so you know which one to get. I had to get this as I don't think that's going to go all the way from the front to the back of the car. Neither will this extension that they included so I'm definitely going to need that wire. And I need to split that as well into two different parts because one's for the laser and one's for the projector itself. And I need to stick all of these individual fiber optics into that laser projector. So what I'm gonna do now and tape all of these star lights that are put in the hoops and I'm gonna start putting them into all of these different chambers. I'm gonna put that down here for a minute and now I'm gonna start unraveling all of these. That's my first three meter shooting star going down, ready to go into that laser. It's a good length, that one, which is what we need. We need them to be as long as possible to make sure they actually reach down to the laser. Now we're gonna do the same again to the next shooting star. That's number two, now number three. And I'll be back with you all once all these shooting stars are all in taped. <laughs> So what you do to make these shooting stars work is you get all the different strands. You would get this one here and you put one strand into that pod there. And then you get a different set, completely different shooting star. Get that strand and put it in the exact same pot. And you're going to do it in all of these. You want to put about 12 each depending on how many shooting star lights you've drilled through on your fiber optics shooting stars. So another thing I want to mention as well on the right side so my shooting stars are going to go that way so this is the front of the roof and obviously that's the back and they're going to be coming from the back first to the front as they shoot so it'll be going like that so the starting point is this one here and there's 12 strands so you need to find that individual strand you need to pull it out and that's the strand that you'll put in there you have to make sure it's that one as well so that it all flows in correctly so basically that would be number one and that's how you got to work it out of the way it shoots. I've now rounded all of these up. I've taped it the way they've showed to on the website. And then what I'm going to do now is the first bit that it starts from. So where the wire goes on this is where it starts. Now I'm going to thread it through, tape it around. I'll put a picture up again of how to do it. I'm then going to glue it with hot glue so it stays in there properly because I don't think tape will hold it very well. But I'll do that on all of the rest of them. be putting 12 strands in each of these and we're going to be going up to the 12th chamber here and obviously we've got 12 different shooting stars so i'll be putting 12 strands in each one up to the 12th chamber that's where i've got to so far i've put 12 in each i've got another nine chambers to fill with 12 different shooting stars so now it's in place i'm now going to glue it in so it can't fall out as the tape doesn't hold it really good through this hole 
with the glue. Now I'm gonna tape round it once that glue is set off. The exact same as I've done this, and we're all good to go. And this is us putting the 12th one in. And all we've got to do now is wait for that to dry and we can put some more insulation tape on. And then the shooting stars will be fully finished. And then that is the roof complete and we can think about getting it back into the car. This is exactly how yours should look like once it's all glued in and taped up. We've like split them into different strands so you know where they're going. That is a laser shooting star projector now complete. We're going to cut all the fibre optics off when it's actually in the car to make it easier because I've seen some people put it in the car with it all cut and then it starts falling back through and, and I can't be bothered to cut them all now and then put it in the car to have to cut them again so I'm just going to do it once it's in the car so it's actually in position properly. done to test these actually work is i've got a wireless battery pack that you jump start a car with and we've connected the laser wire and the projector for the whole starlight roof wires together in these terminals and now if we come underneath you can see that all of the stars are working the shooting star as well which is just there flashing red and green now now that we know it's working we can now start thinking about getting it back in the car and now we just need to tidy up a couple bits and then we can put it back in the car i'm in another course right now I'm gonna put the big projector just under here mine is a little bit different to this but it's better in a way this is cut out more than mine so a projector there mine would be carpet whereas that is all plastic but we're gonna put a projector with the fiber optics facing that way underneath and that should be the way to make it work because the wires at the back are a bit short to make it go into the back of the car. So this is the other option that we're thinking about doing as it does just fit in there. If it was any bigger, it wouldn't fit. But luckily for mine, it's carpet up to here and it's just a little square in the middle. This would still fit, but it gets stuck just there. So it like kind of comes out a bit with the projector in, but it would go in if the projector goes up a little bit more because you do have a little bit more space but not too much but it will just go in luckily for that as well so if you do have one like this it will just fit just though like it's quite tight but it will fit because i was originally gonna make the fiber optics come out through here and get the projector sitting in there but it won't work so we are gonna have to get it just above there so this is what i mean with the projector it's going to be sitting just here so basically it looks like that and that's where the fiber optics are going to go through and this little foam bit it actually comes on the course already but that should actually support it so it can't fall back into the light that's good because in a way if i ever change the interior light bulb i'm not affecting this projector so it's good where it's sitting so now the starlight roof is completely finished this is what it looks like. We've got the shooting stars here at the back. That's where they're gonna rest. There'll be more up here, just like that. Once it's in the car, that's at the back of the car. And then moving to the front where the interior light is, next to the sun visors, is the projector where the fiber optics are gonna go into. And this is on the Corsa D three door hatchback. And this is how it's looking. That's 520 fiber optics. And it is now all done. So that is how you do it. We're now going to put a sound deadener back onto the roof, just like it was in the beginning, just so it covers all this up again and so that it works how it should do. So that is literally how you do it. And then just tape it down. You may be wondering where the Bluetooth antenna is. We've stuck it just into there and it literally fits pretty much flush at the end of that, which you can see just there. So that is perfect where it is. And then we're going to plug that wire into the back there and it'll probably come through here and that is how it will all sit what i'm about to do now is i'm going to solder the little wire they've included because this ain't long enough to actually go from the back of the car to the front and that's only for the laser lights i've got to do this with the front as well because obviously that's got to go down from the head to the bottom where the cigarette lighter is so that is one thing you've got to bear in mind is this is not long enough 
So I've bought some electric wire extension. I'll put the link in the description for this as well. And anything else I've used in today's video, just so you guys can get exactly what I've used. So what you've got to do is you've got to strip this back and you've got to put red to red and black to black. How you join them together is by soldering them up to each other. So we'll solder red to red, obviously, like I just said, and then black to black. Then we'll put some insulation tape round the two joints. So once it's connected, we'll tape around it. And then once we've done the red and taped around that, we're going to tape around the whole lot together. So it just looks like this black sleeve now, so that it looks all the same. And then we'll put it in the car and then we'll be able to get the exact size that we need the wire to be. And then we can cut where we want it to line up to. But obviously we're going to connect it to this because this is the end of the wire that connects into the projector and the laser lights. That's why we need to connect them together. So I've got the solder in iron and I've got the solder and now we're going to connect these wires together. That's the first solder. It ain't perfect, but it's worked. And I don't claim to be a solderer, but that's how this one has turned out. So now we can wrap that in insulation tape and then we do the same with the black one. And that is both red to red and black to black wires soldered. And now we can put some insulation tape around them. The first section of insulation tape done. Now to wrap it all around together. And there's it all joined up to match the rest of the sleeve. Make sure it's tight on there. And that is the first bit done. And then you just do the exact same thing as you did then on this one for the shooting star. So that's the projector one done now. We're going to be using the exact same extension wire as we did on the projector one as when we do the shooting stars. So that's your projector done now. And now we can move on to the shooting stars. So just do the exact same method as I've done just now. And everything should be the exact same. And then that way we can cut it to size when it's in the car. What we do now, we've got the end of the wire that plugs into the projector. We need to make sure there's enough excess wire so that it doesn't go too short. So I'm going to put it up to about here. The projector will be about here, but we're going to have about probably like 10 centimeters more than we need. So I'm going to put it about there. So I'll mark it about here. So I know where to put the wire and where it needs to go. I need to feed it from there up to here. I'm going to try and connect it onto this wire already. That's the interior light and then feed it down. I'm going to go down through there and then up to here. And I'm going to have the wire come down here and then I'm going to slot it through this little gap under there up to there so I can grab it. And then I'm going to put it onto that little screw there. So it's on a switchable live instead of wiring it up to the cigarette lighter. That way it won't be in the way and I won't have another one of these cigarette lighter plugs, which I have to keep plugging and unplugging and having to press the switch and it'll just get in the way. So I'm just going to have it on that switchable live. So when the car's off, it's not draining my battery and it's only going to work and the keys are actually in the ignition and you turn it onto the electrics or the mains where the car turns on. So that's how that will work. So I'm not doing the cigarette lighter. I'm just going to put it down to the switchable live. The reason I'm putting it on that screw is because you can release it and then put the metal wire around it. And then that way will just work from there. Obviously, you need to buy like a little ring or something to put on it. This is just a quicker way of doing it. But that's how I'm going to do it. As you can just see in there, where those black wires are, that is where I have put the wires around the screw. Now when I turn the key in the ignition, it will power on the starlight roof and you can't see it, which is even better. I like every course the glove box likes to keep falling off. But, but that is how I've done mine. You can do it your own way if you want. I've decided not to do the cigarette liar and go with the much more cleaner option where you can't see it but it's personal preference so that's why i'm going to wire it into the car so when i turn the ignition on all of the roof lights up obviously once i turn it off it will just turn off with the car and won't stay as a permanent live vent so it can't drain my battery as it will just be a switchable live so i just need to wire it all the way down now so obviously we've marked where it's going to hang to and i've fed the wire so far up to this first bit and i'm just going to keep hooking it on to these little hooks out of there that already come on the car and then just keep doing the same 
and then I'm going to tape it around or I'm going to try and thread it through where these tapes are at the moment so that it's with the other wires that are already come standard in the car and I'm just going to drop it down and you're just going to keep threading it through to the bottom this is what it's looking like so far obviously that will tuck around at the top but I threaded it down in between where the other wires are like I said I was going to and now I just need to drop it down into this part here from up there so get the end of the wire and you want to tuck it until you see it start showing under there the wire is tucked in I've made sure I've tucked it behind that because I don't want to end up affecting the trim going back on because it's blocking this I did put it through that originally but then I thought it's probably going to mess up and I don't want to go over this again because that would mean having to rip that back out just to rewire it all up just because of that little one mistake so I've tucked it behind there and then once it's gone on I've just reached my hand up to pull this down I just need to make it look a little neater and then I can cut it to size and that will be it done so I pull the wire down even more I can get all the excess down so that this fits perfectly up here this just goes a little bit more past the line I did but to be honest it gives it a bit more extension for just in case it's not long enough and then I don't have to mess around pulling it all back out so that's how I've done it it's all up here I'm going to tape this together first before I leave it like that I'm going to connect it to this and then that's it going down through here once that's cut I can use the rest of the wire to do the shooting stars which will go all the way back from there and we'll tuck up this behind all these possibly or stuck against the sides I'm not too sure yet but we'll work it out and then I'll feed it down there as well back down to here so just what we've done now basically once it's cut I just use scissors that should be the right length and then all this excess wire like I said before will be used for the shooting stars so that's the projector sorted now we can move on to the shooting stars so you just need to solder it and then once you've soldered it to this wire again we can do what we've just done with the projector so what i've done is i've got the end of the electrical wire i've threaded it through this point here through there and all of the top roof support and then i've threaded it down to here you can't actually thread it through there otherwise i would because it would have fit perfectly but you can't do that so now I'm just going to keep threading it through. I've made sure I've left enough excess at the back here so it drops down into the back of the car. I shouldn't need that much, but it's just so that when this goes up, it will actually raise. So obviously I am going to lose a little bit, but I'm just going to keep threading that through. So you just literally push it straight through these supports at the top until you get to here and then I've threaded it through there. You could go through there, but I've gone through here. But I might change this round. I'm not too sure yet. So before we do go any further in this video, I want to mention now where that hole is, where the wire is going through, you do not want to put it there because this is the sun visor screw slash clip hole and you won't be able to put the sun visor back in because that wire will be in the way of when you put the roof back in and put the sun visor back in and try and screw it in and it just won't work. You also don't want to put it in the support handle screw hole because then you won't be able to put your support handle in that you hold on to if say you're going fast in a car and it's ready to support your hand. You won't be able to put it in there either. So the only hole you can put it in is this hole here that's ticked as it won't affect anything regarding to the roof. So that should be the hole you use. And now I'm just going to thread it through the car and make sure it's long enough. Once it's threaded through there, you want to thread it through just behind here and then once you threaded it through there i'm going to thread it down here so that's the wire up here i've now managed to get it down to here again and then you just pull it through underneath just like that and tuck it behind this black clip there and luckily the wire fit and if we go to the back we've still got all this excess left over this is going to be on top of the roof just joining up there to the shooting star so it'll come like this basically about here just before the velcro and that is the wires done so now we can move on to putting the roof in and we can plug the wires into the projectors the roof can go back on and all the trims can go back in and that is the course of d with no roof so putting a bit of this carpet on to stop it from hitting the bodywork of the car so it makes a racket. 
and now we're going to glue the projector so it can't move around. So that's what's going to keep it in place. And that is a sound dead now to stop it from hitting on this metal roof because I don't want to hear that when I'm driving. And I don't think anyone else would either. We're now going to glue the shooting stars projector to the roof as well. So now the roof is ready. Well, that was easier getting it back in than taking it out. But now we've got to put the supports up. So we're going to put some of the plastic trims back on. It's leaning on the seats at the moment. Let's actually attach it back to the roof. So that's the back now attached so far. So the Starlight roof is now finally back in the Corsa and it is looking so good. I'm loving the fact that all the interior trims are now black. If you want to see how I painted all the panels and the sun visors and anything else on this car, it's including the roof, then check out my last video, I'll put the link in the description and you'll be able to see how I sprayed these. I've got to cut 520 of these fibre optics. My car is going to be a mess. It's going to be so worth it. And the projector is solid in there. It's not moving. And it's the exact same with the shooting star in the boot of the car. Which is just up here. It's solid and the roof's looking really well. Like we were originally going to. Onto the fuse box. So we've put the red to the red out of this fuse here which is a switchable live. And then the black has gone to an earth, which is bottled behind, just on there. Obviously you need wire connectors to do this properly. This is kind of a bodge in a way, but we haven't got the wire connectors at the moment, but once we have them, they'll be put on around there so it's done properly and neatly. This is just what it looks like for now, just to show you it all working. So if you turn the ignition on, you don't have to turn it all the way on, but it turns the lights on. Whereas if I turn the ignition off now, it turns them off. And if I turn them back on, it's on. So that is how that works. Obviously, don't do it like this. This is a bodgy way. You just need the switch connectors. You can do it if you want to do it, but you want to use proper wire connectors. But that is it all working. Now this extra wire excess needs to be cut down to size. So we've now put a fuse link here, which is the black thing there. And we've now soldered the wires to the connector as well. So the switch live is all ready now. We're just going to put a connector on this black wire here and connect it onto the earth, which is under the fuse box just there, that little screw you can see. That will be the wires connected. And then we can get on to cutting these fibre optics on the roof. I didn't record me putting all these trims back on because we were just trying to get the roof back in balance because it was just falling back down and it's hard to do whilst filming. But this is it back in. To chop these fibre optics off, you can use either scissors, nail clippers or pliers or anything that's sharp like these. I'm using this style of nail clipper because it seems to get right up there because of the little point it has on the end, just here. And all you've got to do is literally pierce it off like that. And that is what we've got to do. 520 more times. This is going to be a long old process. So that's what I'm using. Let's get cutting. Now decided I'm gonna go with this because it goes straight up flat like the other one does but this one just seems to be a lot quicker to use like it's that quick whereas the other one you got to try and angle it and it's quite annoying whereas this one is just straight everywhere so you literally just go straight up and it's done so I'm gonna carry on with this one now just a normal nail clipper
And now for the final strand. And there we go. There is a Corsa D 2009 three door hatchback starlight roof. And here's some cinematics. So this is what the Corsa D looks like with the shooting stars. I am so happy with the way this has gone. This is 520 stars. It's 490 in total plus the shooting stars. So 520, might be 450. I can't remember off the top of my head, but this is what it looks like. Let me know what you think down below. I know this is a bit crazy for the Corsa, but this is what you all wanted to see. Taking a couple of days to do, but it's finally done. And I'm so happy with the way this has turned out. And I would definitely recommend you do this. It is a bit time consuming and can be stressful. But once it's finished, it makes you feel so good that you've actually done it. The reason why it hasn't got any shooting stars underneath near the glass is because I don't want it reflecting on the glass. Same with at the back. And I didn't put any under here, under the sun visors, because most of the time I have them up so you won't really see them. And I haven't got any on the front either. As I didn't want it to reflect on anything. The only annoying thing is you can hear this noise. That is projector in the top. This shooting star roof is also one way you can get a mobile app, but I'm going to show you one here for now as I'm using my phone to record. But you can change all the colours. So you can have red. We can go green. Like a light blue. Yellow or gold. Purple, which looks pretty sick. I do like the way that looks. And then we've got dark blue. You can press all, which is all the shooting stars at once. You can have a two color fade. So it will change to two different colors. So green and red, now blue and green. Turn it on and off. So even if you are in the car and you have your car on, because this is actually wired up to the switchable live, you can still turn this off by controlling this button. So you can either have it on or off like anything else. The only downside to this is the fact that now you can actually see all the little holes in the roof. Whereas if it was still grey, you might not have seen it as much, but it would have looked like actual holes in the roof. So that is the shooting star roof now done on the Corsa. Let me know what you guys think down below. Would you do this to yours? If you're going for the three door hatchback, I highly recommend you do 520 pieces. Maybe more if you want to do underneath the sun visors, but that's completely up to you and if you wanted to do underneath the windows. But the reason why I haven't, the reason I said before, is because I don't want it reflecting on the glass. That way, it won't distract you when you're looking out. I think this is my favorite style so far. I think the white just makes it look so clean and it gives it that actual Rolls Royce effect. I'm not trying to make this car look like a Rolls Royce. I'm literally just doing it for my own personal preference because I think it looks really cool. And I've not seen anyone on YouTube do this to a Corsa. Bit obvious why. But I thought it looked pretty cool and I think it pops off so well with a black interior, which I've done in the last video. Just makes the whole car look so much more modern and cleaner. And I will see you all in the next video. Let me know what you want me to do for the next mod on this Corsa or on the Subaru. We've got a Starlight Roof coming for that soon.